Freddie Goudreau not heading on the road with the Wild as they embark on their road trip out east. Jared Spurgeon on long-term injured reserve. Who got called up and what does Spurgeon being put on long-term injured reserve actually mean? All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. And welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe so you can join Locked on Wild Nation by joining us on YouTube or your favorite podcast platforms, and also so you don't miss out on any of our content throughout the week. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we discuss the injury situation for the Minnesota Wild once again as Freddie Goudreau banged up to the point that he is not heading on the trip with the Minnesota Wild. Jared Spurgeon being put on long-term injured reserve, and Jujar Kara being called up to take a forward spot on the roster. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. More injury news for the Minnesota Wild here today. And um, one is a one is an injury that I think we need to keep an eye on. The other is more procedural. And so let's start with Freddie Goudreau. Goudreau is not going to travel with the Wild on the East Coast road trip against Philadelphia, Washington, and New Jersey. And uh, it will be Jujar Kara getting the call to take uh, a spot on the roster to head with the team. Now, as far as when this injury happened, uh, it is interesting to take a look just at uh, some of the numbers for Goudreau. He has consistently been above 15 minutes in every game so far this season. But if you look at the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs, the second game of the season, Goudreau only played nine minutes, 51 seconds of ice time in that game. And you look at what happened in the uh, two games after that, the Montreal win, the Los Angeles Kings loss, went through the entirety of the time on the ice without even taking a shot in either game. He did have four shots against Columbus, but then no shots against Edmonton in over 15 minutes of ice time. It was an upper body injury for Freddie Goudreau. And so that could explain why it seems like Goudreau has been off to a little bit of a slow start uh, without even a single point here so far this season. That's that's one of the uh, the potential causes for that uh, for that reason. I mean, that third line has had moments, but uh, it hasn't been a largely productive line as of yet. So it's not uh, it's not as though the injury is the entirety of the story. But it certainly does help paint a picture that if Goudreau was dealing with any sort of uh, an injury, that uh, it would hinder his play on the ice. And so we have yet another instance in which we will have a wild player who will sit out for uh, a handful of games. We'll see how long this ends up going. But uh, at this point, it's going to be the road trip at least. And uh, we'll see how much longer it is uh, beyond that um, for Freddie Goudreau to be out. What it does allow the Minnesota Wilds due to Jared Spurgeon being put on long-term injured reserve, it does allow them to call up another body to come with on the road trip. So Jujar Kara will be making the trip with the Minnesota Wilds. But we got to talk about um, the lineup because... You've got Jujar Kara, who is very much a similar player to Marcus Foligno. And so we got to talk through the thought process of how this lineup could look in at least Philadelphia's game. Because by all accounts, there's a possibility that Matt Boldy will play 
by the end of this road trip. And so let's just start with this Philadelphia game, because if those two bring similar skill sets, it does not make sense to put them both on the same line and just pencil a guy in to fill in in the spot in the lineup in which uh, he's replacing. So I think what I would do is this. I think I would swap Drew Jarkera and Brandon Duham at least for the Philadelphia game. Because then what you have is you've got a speed component to help Marco Rossi out a little bit. You've got the physical component in Marcus Foligno. And then your fourth line looks like Vinny Letary, Connor Dewar, and Drew Jarkera. And I understand that Duhame, Dewar, and Letary looked good against Edmonton. That's great. But I'm telling you, I just don't see a, sit- a situation in which Kara and Felino on the same line with Marco Rossi. I don't see a situation in which that works. It's just, it's two components that just don't mesh well with what um, Marco Rossi brings to the table. So that'd be how I would handle it. And on the Kara front, I mean, he had a, a great preseason. And we knew going into the season that it was going to be these guys, Vinny Letary, Drew Jarkera mostly, who uh, would be getting the call-ups first. Now, with Alex Goligoski going on injured reserve, we saw Sammy Walker get an opportunity. Um, it was a short opportunity. And so the Wild now cycling through these two guys and bringing them uh, along on the road trip. And Kara brings physical play, but he also uh, showed some upside in preseason offensively. And so maybe he can be somebody that uh, that helps just provide a little bit more uh, production to that third line in particular. Um, or just the bottom six in general. We've seen, we saw the first line essentially dominate the game against Edmonton. And you want to see a little bit more even production throughout the lineup. And whether it be on the fourth line, whether it be on the third line, Kara, I think, can bring a little something uh, to this lineup. Now, maybe, maybe not a lot, but he can at least bring something to the lineup depending on where he slots in. But personally, I would like to see that be on the fourth line and just give Marco Rossi a little help on that third line with uh, with some speed. Always going to be in favor of Brandon Duhame getting an opportunity to uh, to get bumped up a little bit in the lineup. Do that and try it. See if it works. If it doesn't, you've got a game the next day and you can just go back to Letary Dewar, Duhame, because it did look good. That line combo did look good against the Edmonton Oilers. Just give it a shot. What's the worst that you have to uh, to lose at this point? Uh, it's it, It'll be interesting to see because we're going to see if having somebody who is not injured is going to offer some better production than what Freddie Goudreau has been offering so far this season. So hopefully it's not too long of an injury for Goudreau because he is somebody that can provide some uh, some offensive upside when healthy, but he just has not been able to do that so far here this season. So Goudreau will not travel. We'll see what the update is on him after the weekend is done. After we move to the month of November, after uh, Sunday's game, the Wild will be done for the month. So we'll see if we get an update on Goudreau's status. Now, we did get an update on Jared Spurgeon because he was put on long-term injured reserve. So what exactly does that mean? Does that mean he's missing 10 additional games? We'll talk about that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. 
from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or dive alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for a uh, bonus episode. Brett Marshall of Sound the Foghorn joins us as we dive into the early season surprises analytically, and uh, we'll talk through the entirety of the lineup as well. So make sure to tune in for that for tomorrow's episode, and then we'll have your pregame preview for you highlighting the uh, Wild and the Flyers. So all that coming up for you uh, tomorrow here on Locked on Wild. So Jared Spurgeon was put on long-term injured reserve today. And uh, I know my initial reaction before seeing uh, the news was, I hope this doesn't mean that this is additional to the games that he has already missed because that seems like that would be a huge missed opportunity for the Wilds to uh, not only have to try to fill his spot in the roster, but also have to wait longer for him um, for uh, for him to get back. But it is a uh, it is a retroactive placement on long term injured reserve. So this is something that is an option for teams when they are going to use long-term injured reserve is that they can retroactively place a player on it depending on how much time they miss. But in order to be on long-term injured reserve, you have to miss at least 10 games or 24 days of, uh, of the season. And so obviously Spurgeon is not nearly as far along as Matt Boldy is. Haven't really heard much of an update other than that. He's skating um, on his own. And so what this allows the Wild to do is to bring an extra player on the road trip. They are able to bring Jujar Kara on the road trip. You've got Damon Hunt already um, to give the Wild an extra defenseman. So this was never a situation with Spurgeon where the Wild were going to utilize the long-term injured reserve money relief. They're using the roster spot relief at this point because if you take and we I encourage you if you haven't already seen it to go back and look at our uh, massive breakdown of long-term injured reserve after Alex Goligoski was put on LTIR broke down how things are split up with performance bonuses and depending on how close you are to the salary cap that's subtracted from a player's actual cap hit to determine how much money you have that you can use any player that the wild would put in that relief pool, they would have to figure out a way to get back down under the salary cap when Spurgeon is eligible to return. And so this was never going to be a situation where they use money from that pool to try to add pieces to the lineup. Uh, Alex Goligoski, on the other hand, that being a more long-term injury allowed the wild some flexibility to uh, actually be able to carry additional players on the roster. And so for Spurgeon, this just more so allows them to bring up an additional body. uh, So that if they suffer an injury sometime on the road trip, they're covered um, in having an additional player to play. Now, obviously if there's an injury to a forward, you're going to have to do 11 and 7, but at least you've got extra bodies going on the trip that can uh, can help you get through it relatively in one piece. Now, while we're on the topic of defense, Damon Hunt is the extra body on defense currently. Damon Hunt should not be 
the extra body. He should be in the lineup. And I know the preference for the Minnesota Wild was to have Damon Hunt available as insurance, but that he would not necessarily actually play. I mean, the more we get into the season, the more it just seems to become apparent. And we saw this last year. So it's not like this is a new problem. We just continue to see large stretches of um, really uninspiring play defensively from John Merrill. And you look at the numbers. I actually was surprised that he's only been called for two penalties this year, but he has more penalty minutes than shots. He has one point on the season and has been largely responsible for many defensive breakdowns that have led to goals for the opponents. And this was the issue that we ran into last season with wondering when the discipline, when the accountability comes for players drawing penalties, committing penalties, making mistakes, lapses in coverage. At what point do players start to be held accountable for their play. It just doesn't seem to be part of the Dean Evison experience unless you're a player that has not played as much in the league as some of the veterans have in the roster. But it just continues to cost you goals. And it's funny because this is just a little bit of a, uh, a tease to tomorrow's episode with Brett Marshall of Sound the Foghorn. Um, and this is actually what kind of jogged me discussing this. Kalen Addison's numbers have actually been relatively decent without John Merrill. And so at some point, you move players around in the lineup, their numbers improve. You got to go back to the source. You got to go back to the source of the problem. And the the fact that it has not been really addressed or dealt with at all, is kind of worrisome because as we've said with veteran players many times, what you see is what you get. And Merrill two years ago when the wild were scoring every goal under the sun, your third pairing defenseman is not a problem because if they end up giving up a goal in a defensive breakdown, you just go score two or you're, or you're leading seven to two at that point in the game anyway. So third pairing defensemen, when you have an offense that can just score at will, isn't going to be something that hurts you. But when you take away that offensive protection and you are a team that is having to kind of claw through and win games in much more tight fashion, those types of plays get magnified and um, it just leads to a lot of moments where you're looking at a guy saying, well, what the heck were you doing? What were you thinking in that instance? And so I would really, really like to see Damon Hunt get an opportunity to uh, hop into this lineup and just see what you've got. I mean, Dakota Mermis has more than held his own uh, as a, um, a third pairing defenseman on this team. His pairing partner is not. So give it a shot. What's what's the worst that can happen? If it doesn't end up going well, then at least you know. And then you can go back to the John Merrill experience for Friday's game against the Washington Capitals. But if you don't give it a shot, then I just I, I don't know what to tell you. So we'll see. Inevitably, I think we know what will happen. But I'm just going to throw it out there into the cosmos that maybe there's some universe in which Damon Hunt actually plays in tomorrow's game. We'll uh, we'll wait and see, I guess. Um, as we had discussed, Matt Boldy is nearing a return, which means that he will likely reoccupy his second line spot in the lineup. But uh, that is going to mean that Pat Maroon gets de-elevated, which is a shame because he's actually played pretty well. And so we'll talk about Pat Maroon's contributions to this team so far as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. 
Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. And if you, like me, like to live your life in the moment, you may have experienced this exact same scenario. Let's say you're with a group of friends and you want to go catch the Minnesota Timberwolves or the Minnesota Wild or the Minnesota Vikings in action, and you decide, let's get some tickets and go the day of the event. You have probably gone to your favorite ticket app, found the tickets to be outrageously expensive, or you find tickets, you go to the event, and you find out that your seat view is obstructed. Game Time is here to erase all of those day of buying woes and make a ticket buying experience the best it can be. Game Time offers last minute tickets, flash deals, plus views from every seat in the venue. And with their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, Game Time leaves you feeling great every time you go to an event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wilds your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, again, make sure you check out tomorrow's episode with Brett Marshall of Sound the Foghorn, as well as our pregame preview, taking a look at tomorrow's game against the Philadelphia Flyers. So when Boldy does get reintroduced into the lineup, it means that Pat Maroon is going to slot back down um, into probably his normal spot on the fourth line. But was talking with uh, a few people in the comments and on uh, X as well throughout the week. Pat Maroon has been a surprise so far this season. And I'm not talking about a surprise in terms of defensive lapses like some of the uh, defensemen have been this year. I'm talking in a good way. I mean, you're you're looking at a guy who was brought in here to be a uh, a fourth liner and more of a uh, vocal leader in the in the room who's playing second line minutes right now and it's working. He is contributing. He had an assist on Jewel Erickson X goal. Uh, in the game against the Oilers. He's got four points on the season. And, uh, oh, by the way, while Maroon, and I know this is inflated due to the uh, the fact that he's playing higher in the lineup at this uh, current moment, Maroon is averaging just under 13 minutes per game of ice time. He's got four assists. He is a plus two on the season. He's only committed one penalty. And he has nine shots. Now, he hasn't scored as of yet, but um, you look at what he has done on a game-to-game basis. He played 15 minutes against Edmonton, had an assist. He was a plus two. And the game against Columbus had two assists, was a plus two, and uh, played just under 16 minutes. So he's handled being elevated in the lineup uh, very well. Now, from a physicality standpoint, maybe we expected a little bit more of that and a little less of what we've gotten offensively, but he's just so steady with the puck. He is somebody to me that knows what he is at this point in his career and doesn't try to be something he's not. He has a good eye with the puck. He's pretty uh, sure handling with the puck on his stick. And honestly, he just is pretty smooth out there. Uh, for a bigger guy. That was something that surprised me a little bit too, actually now having had a chance to uh, to see him play. And so I know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of negative vibe on the Bill Guerin train amongst uh, many members of the uh, the fan base as of right now, but to bring Maroon in to have a portion of his salary, eaten by the lightning to trade him here for a low round draft pick and to be paying him 800 K to be doing more by the way, than the last two enforcers on this team have done combined 
one of which we will see against the Flyers tomorrow. Um, Ryan Reeves, as of right now, is averaging seven minutes, 50 seconds of ice time per game on the season. He's a minus four. He has no points. He has 12 penalty minutes in six games and uh, is is playing, you know, is playing six or seven minutes a night on the uh, the fourth line, including in one of their more recent games against the Tampa Bay Lightning, five minutes, played five minutes in a game against the Lightning. Oh, and then Nick Delorier, who also got a big contract this t- with the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. He's played six games, no points, really no nothing. He is averaging just under 10 minutes a game of ice time on the season. So Pat Maroon is out producing both of those guys. And we knew coming in that Maroon has a little bit more offensively to offer than both of them. But I think he has exceeded what the expectations were for him. Now, you could argue on the other side of that coin that it's a not a great sign that the team is asking him to do more of those things. That just speaks to kind of where the rest of the team is at with injuries and such. But I think the fact that he's been able to step into that type of role with Jewel Erickson Eck and Marcus Johansson and that that line has performed well in the two games that it's happened, I think is a good sign for the fact that if they need him to fill in in a pinch, that he's able to do it. Whereas, you know, Alex Goligoski, when we have had him fill in over the last couple of years, it hasn't necessarily gone as well. So, yes, the expectation is that Matt Boldy will take his second line spot. But I think when Maroon does get dropped lower in the lineup. It'll be interesting to see if he plays more of a third line role or if he goes back to the traditional fourth line role because the fourth line looked good. Dewar, Duhame, and Maroon, that fourth line looked good together. And so he just, he seems like somebody that is able to adapt to what his line mates are doing and to just... Just be part of it. Just be part of the party uh, as opposed to somebody who doesn't fit in in those combinations and just kind of has to try to not make mistakes out there. So that's been fun to watch here over the uh, early part of the season as well. Again, probably would rather have other players getting production in those spots, but it's hard. it's hard to argue with the results at this point through the uh, the first six games of the season on the Pat Maroon front. So a lot of potential roster juggling coming up for you tomorrow. We'll see what we get for, uh, for potential lines, and uh, we'll see how things go against the Philadelphia Flyers uh, coming up for you tomorrow night. Uh, just a programming note as well, um, there will not be a postcast after tomorrow's game. Going to be getting home late. Uh, from some uh, other work-related duties. And so, unfortunately, no postcast, but we will be back at it on Friday. Uh, We'll have full game coverage for you against the Washington Capitals. So we'll see what happens tomorrow against the Flyers, and uh, hopefully the Wilds are able to pick up yet another win. But that will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wild. So again, now that you're finished listening to the show, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any Locked on Wild content as the season rolls along. Whether it be full episodes, pregame previews, postcasts, or more, Locked on Wild has you covered fully every game this season. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Podcast Network.